and welcome to New Scandinavian Cooking from Denmark. I'm Andreas Wiestad. The relations between the Scandinavian countries have always been close, dating all the way back to the Viking era and before. Remember, this sea that separates the countries is what united them. The sea has been important not just for transportation, but also for food. And it's not just about fish. Here in the Vodden Sea region in southwestern Denmark, the soft ocean bed has been harvested like an underwater garden. Today, we'll visit the historical town of Riva, the center of this part of Denmark, for nearly 1,300 years. The ancient town also offers some insights on how people lived and coexisted with nature in ancient times. In today's program, Danish chef Klaus Meyer and I will introduce you to some different ways of using nature's resources and the local produce. We are out here looking for edible herbs and mollusks, free, fresh, just sitting there waiting to be taken. We'll start off with oysters. Some people look for the pearls, but I think the true joy is to be found in a fresh oyster right from the seabed. Then we're gonna make a ceviche in Nordic style with sand gaper and marshland herbs. A smoothie based on sea buckthorn berries and local honey. And as a main course, beef sirloin wrapped in heather branches and uh, dock leaves and then cooked slowly in a ground oven. It comes with a broad bean salad with hazelnuts and summer apples. And uh, eventually, the moment of sweetness, a wholesome porridge with millet, oats, rye, blueberry and whipped cream, true Viking style. The coastal mudflats of the Wadden Sea area are very prone to flooding. This can be a good thing, particularly for the grass, but if you have to live here, it can be quite impractical to have your house flooded every 12 hours or so. That's why traditionally houses here are built on stilts or on earth platforms. In the early 20th century, after some horrendous floods, they started building dikes. So this area here, for instance, would normally be flooded every day at high tide had it not been for the dikes. The Wadden Sea stretches all the way from Denmark through Germany down to Holland. 900 square kilometers of seabed is turned into wading waters over the six hour ebb period before turning back into the sea when the tide comes in. What I really love about glassword is its beautiful shape, its bright green color, and then its succulent crispy, slightly salty taste. It grows in wet areas all over the world and it is uh, even cultivated in mud and uh, salty water. composed of tons and tons of cold climate, slow growing Danish oysters, 2.2 kilometers from the seashore. We've been collecting not only oysters, but also different types of shellfish that are hiding in the sand. But uh, now the tide is coming in and we're gonna hurry away from here. It's been a tough walk, but 
it has been all worth it when you see what I bring back. A bucket full of beautiful big oysters. But also, we found an abundance of mussels out there. Razor shells. This one is called uh, a cockle. It is maybe the most delicate of all mussels because of its wonderful aroma. This amazing mussel is called the sand gaper. It actually disappeared from Denmark after the last ice age, but the Vikings brought it back when they returned from their excursions to the United States. And uh, I'm very happy about it because it has a beautiful texture and a wonderful aroma. I'm gonna make this wonderful Nordic ceviche with a sand gaper, but please remember that uh, normally you're only supposed to eat oysters and uh, mussels raw from October to April, the cold period. When you have them in the warm period, there might be a risk that they contain bacteria from the water, but uh, I only gotta eat it myself. And I am definitely prepared to run the risk because I know how good this dish is. It's actually very easy to open them with the tip of the knife. You do exactly as when you open oysters only, it's much more easy to separate the mussels from the shell. Now this is called rabi, or as it is also called, a German turnip. A rather underestimated member of the Nordic vegetable family. It is a cabbage variety, but it has the character of a root vegetable. It is juicy, crispy, and uh, you can easily eat it raw. Now I just cut it into small cubes. But only leave it into the vinaigrette for about 30 minutes, maybe one hour. Otherwise, well, the flavor turns a little rusty. We need some herbs now, and what is more natural than using herbs from the wetlands? This one is called scurvy grass, and it is virtually packed with uh, vitamin C. It is the number one reason why the Danish seamen survived the wintertime in the past. It has a beautiful flavor, almost like wild rocket. And then another marshland or wetland uh, plant, hairsfoot clover. And what is crazy about it is that it tastes like coriander or cilantro. And cilantro is a classical ingredient in uh, ceviche. I know you salt here because uh, the mussel and also the grass is salt by itself, but a little bit of rapeseed oil a little bit of Nordic apple cider vinegar. Almost as much cider vinegar as you add rapeseed oil. And the reason why I can do that is that I also add a little bit of sugar, according to tradition. And this is it. So Nordic ceviche, it is as simple as that. Two and a half minutes of uh, kitchen work and we are there. If you can't find the ingredients that I have, then use uh, any type of mollusks, fish, and the herbs that you prefer. Serve it just before the dinner in a spoon on a toasted bread with a little butter on the top. It's time to move on. I'm almost wet. But it's so good. Vibrant, fresh. A primitive stone path links the island of Mondo with the mainland. In this part that is underwater half the day, there's a 1.7 meter, almost six feet difference between high tide and low tide. So when you arrive at the island or want to leave it, you have to adapt your movements to the tide or else you've got to wait until the next low tide. But not everyone is quite so diligent. Every year, some seven cars on average, belonging to both tourists and some of the 38 Mondo Islanders, end up underwater due to being surprised by the tide halfway across the Wadden Sea or else they just end up staying on the island for a little longer than they planned. The oysters from the Wadden Sea are different than normal farmed oysters. They have all different kinds of shapes. When they've grown this big, they can be quite difficult to open. And since they have grown where the water is quite cool, they have a much more distinct flavor. Well, look at that. Well, the problem with these oysters is that 
you're supposed to eat an oyster in like one mouthful and this is really quite a lot. Well, normally I eat oysters just with a little bit of lemon juice or a little bit of vinegar. Now I'm going to make a fresh tasting relish to go with the oysters. It consists of finely chopped cucumbers, onion and chevrol. If you can't find chevrol, you can also use parsley or chives. And Reba has been a trading post for a long, long time. So I'm going to add something exotic as well, chopped ginger. There was ginger here at least as far back as 700 years ago. Then I'm gonna add some malt vinegar. You could use sherry vinegar or red wine vinegar, but I think it's much more appropriate to use malt vinegar. One other difference between these oysters and the oysters that you're likely to find in the store is that you see this is full of water, it's full of seawater, so you actually got to pour some of it out. Then I just add a spoonful or so of the relish. Would you like an oyster? The oysters are quite fatty and then you've got really nice freshness from the cucumber, a bit of bite from the onion and a lot of bite from the ginger and it's all perfectly balanced. The construction of these canals started all the way back in the Iron Age. You can imagine how much work it must have been back then. And the primary reason was to create sea access for town, but another just as important reason was to create level fields where cows and sheep could graze. The tenacious grass varieties that thrive here are full of nutrients. Every time the sea floods this area, it adds nutrients and salts, and the meat that comes from here is delicious, intensely flavored with a sort of saltiness to it. In 1075, the historian Adam of Bremen described this part of Denmark as a sterile, frightful land, almost not cultivated anywhere. The one exception he noted, though, was Rebo, which he described as a lively town with shipping to and from overseas destinations. The fact that Rebo had an important role to play in the history of Denmark can be seen clearly if you head off on a stroll around the many well-preserved medieval buildings that you find in Rebo Old Town. show you one of my favorite recipes, a rather extraordinary Danish smoothie based on, on the one hand, the simple things such as yogurt and uh, apples, but then I also add these uh, small orange wonders, namely sea buckthorn, and just one berry contains more vitamin C than one orange. And also, I will add some of this uh, beautiful glassware that we found in the marshlands. Let's start with the yogurt. Half a liter, then two apples. About 75 grams of uh, sea buckthorn, then uh, 25 grams approximately of glassware. And if you don't have access to any salty grass where you live, then you can also add a little bit of salt and uh, the herb that you prefer. But it won't be as good. And then just uh, one or two tablespoons of honey, heather honey, if you can find it. What I really like about this smoothie is that it isn't really sweet. 
it has some distinct acidity from the sea buckthorn and then beautiful mineral tones and a salty touch from the glass for it that kind of breaks the sugar and potters you a little. You can enjoy it as a standalone drink, but you can even enjoy it with your meal with meat or with fish. You can find all the recipes at our website, newscancook.com. Ah, refreshments. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it's lovely. It's got a, a lovely balance between that saltiness and, and the sweetness from the honey, I guess. Yeah, it's honey. It's heather honey, actually. Mm, heather honey is my favorite as well. Traces of permanent settlement date back to 710 years after Jesus Christ. Therefore, Ribu can celebrate its 1300 years birthday in 2010. The Vikings were infamous for their ravaging and plundering. They have a formidable reputation as explorers and robbers. The somewhat less exciting reality is that most Vikings lived relatively peaceful lives as farmers and craftsmen. And they were actually fairly obsessed by appearance. They had clothes like this made from wool and flax and leather shoes. Their hair and beard were well cared for and any Viking worth his salt owned a tweezer, a razor and a near pig. Dark sourdough-based rye bread in combination with good beer, of course, have been part of every Danish meal since the Viking Age and right up until the mid-19th century. Rye bread is nutritious, it can stay fresh for weeks. And maybe that is why it is considered almost as holy and has been surrounded by lots of rituals. For instance, if you dropped a piece of rye bread on the floor, you would have to pick it up and say, I beg your pardon. Ground oven in Danish called uh, a sudon uh, is where the Vikings cook their meat. It is actually just a hole in the ground lined with stones. Now look at this beautifully marbled, well hung rack of veal cut from a two year old bullock that has been grazing in the marshlands its entire life. It can't be much better than that. The only thing I'm going to do is to salt it and uh, wrap it in heather and duck leaves and get back to the oven. When you cook Viking style, then always remember to have a jug of meat on the side. It keeps you hydrated. Now first the duck leaves. Now this. Mmm, heather. If you can't find any duck leaves where you live, just take some rhubarb leaves or some angelica leaves or you even use aloe foil. And now, in with the meat. If you don't want to have the hassle of making your own ground oven, of course you can cook this piece of meat in your normal oven, but um, somehow the feeling will be different, and so will the flavor. Before leaving your ground oven, add some sorts of turf in order to keep the oven hot. their understanding of nature and their sense of passing on knowledge from one generation to the next should be a source of inspiration for us all. And also their food, the original Nordic cuisine had many qualities. For instance, in the vegetable gardens, you will always find broad beans, not only an incredible source of vegetable protein, but also something very lovely in a salad. Talk to you again.
broad beans can be dried and stored for winter time or for long journeys and the Vikings ate loads of them. Before eating them you have to remove them from the pots. You just open them with your nails and then you squeeze them. And uh, if they don't come out then call for your mom or dad. So this was ingredient number one in my summer salad that will go with the meat. And as with all salads and uh, cooking in general, one of the things that really matters is the aspect of seasonality. So I'm gonna add fresh hazelnuts, young onions and uh, crisp Danish summer apples. and they definitely must be fresh. If you can't get hold on that, then rather make the salad without them than using some three-year-old uh, mummified stuff. Just tap them with your knife and take out the nut. When they are big and gorgeous like this, you have to cut them in half. Look at the beautiful ivory-colored flesh that will brighten your salad. And now to the vinaigrette. I want to let the flavors of the vegetables come out and not dominate them with uh, strange stuff. So we stick to the combination of rapeseed oil and apple cider vinegar. Two parts of oil. And one part rather sour, apple cider vinegar, that we counterbalance with uh, heather honey. Pepper. When you've got access to flake salt, then uh, put half the amount in the vinaigrette and keep half the amount of salt. Uh, for the salad, you add it just before serving it and you will enjoy how it melts in your mouth. Now we just need one thing, lemon thyme. Here we go. Porridge. Porridge is a traditional Danish dish and it is very simple to make. Now I'm gonna show you maybe my favorite recipe. First you take rye, millet and uh, also oat. You put it in the pot and uh, roast it slightly until you can smell the nutty flavor and the seeds start popping. Then you add water so that it covers the grains and a little salt and then you cook it for approximately 40 to 45 minutes, stirring a little every now and then. That is the breakfast meal. If you want to turn it into a dessert, then come with me. We just add uh, butter and honey to taste. And the berries. Top it with whipped cream. It's ready to eat. Now I just hope it's done. Mm, it smells incredible. at the last minute.